Uh, in the last video I showed you how I got uh, started with uh, styrene building. I showed you the hood scoop that I made and also uh, the fenders that I made for my uh, Land Rover Defender body. Let me just uh, pluck it off the chassis real quick over there. I mounted the camera a tiny bit differently today to show you up close what it, uh, what it what it's like to build with styrene. Uh, as I said in my previous video I was really uh, well, a bit intimidated by the stuff when I got started. Uh, I'm building a, an RC four-wheel drive Galenda 2 and it comes with a hard body and you can modify those hard bodies using styrene. I glued a piece of styrene over here in the, in the front because what I'm building is actually not a Land Rover uh, Defender but it is a Khan Defender and Khan makes a, a bit of a beefed up version of the Land Rover. This is that uh, hood scoop that I was uh, talking about. I'm not sure if this is for like a turbo diesel or whatnot, but you you will see these uh, these type of hoods on uh, on a few of those uh, Land Rover Defenders. And well, I figured uh, with giving Styrene a go, I could alter mine and uh, make this. I made this using some uh, some uh, thin strips of Styrene. Uh, really need to get used to this camera over there. Uh, you'll be able to see that right there. Just uh, glue that together. I heated up a piece of two millimeter styrene to uh, to get that actual uh, rounded shape that I needed. And uh, afterwards, I sanded it down to uh, to make it fit. And well, it's close to well, it's it's good enough. So the rest of the uh, of the edges and the rest of the lines, I can fill that in with uh, with putty afterwards, which I can. Uh, uh, sand down and then uh, paint. So this is uh, this is the the progress so far. This is what I've showed you in the in the last video. Um, if I pluck this off real quick, then if we move to the front, our headlight falling out over there. Uh, right here in the front, you can see that I also made a custom grill, uh, which has the name of the of the YouTube channel on it. This is built up. This is this was really simple to do. It just takes a lot of time and uh, patience. So the only thing you need is a steady hand, a really sharp blade, and uh, some styrene. I made the mesh that you see in this grill. If I will pluck it out, and then you can you can see it a tiny bit better. Nothing is glued yet because I I want to put in the the putty and uh, and everything first before I start actually fixing stuff to the body. In the back over there you see uh, a mesh. Uh, the mesh comes from, uh, let me see where I have that thing. It comes from a, a kitchen uh, utensil thingy. It's like a, a splash screen that you would fit over a frying pan. There you got it. You can find these uh, things in, uh, in a kitchen store or in like a dollar store. Uh, and I believe I paid like five bucks for this one. And as you can tell, it has a really nice fine mesh, uh, which you can cut out with your Dremel. Be careful uh, to, to wear uh, some safety goggles when you do. I had a tiny splinter ending up in my eye, uh, just because I'm really not that good at taking uh, safety precautions. Uh, so yeah, then, then you got a, a nice little base to glue that, uh, that styrene to. Uh, this still needs to be fine sanded and everything, but uh, the surrounding area, I cut that out of uh, two millimeters of uh, styrene, and then uh, the spokes that you see over here in the in the center in that cutout, that's one millimeter styrene. Um, for the lettering, I used, I believe, this is half a millimeter of styrene, uh, which is really easy to cut. First thing I'll show you is uh, how to cut that lettering because people uh, think that is really difficult. Uh, but it's really not that bad. You will hear my computer bleep in the background, but uh, I really didn't bother uh, muting it. What you start out with is a, a, a thin strip of, uh, of styrene. So you got, uh, you got your uh, sheets of styrene and uh, you just use a, a ruler and a blade to cut it up. Let's see if I can uh, find a piece over here so I can uh, start all the way from uh, scratch. Uh, yeah, there you go. There it is. I've, well, it's either half millimeter or quarter millimeter, but uh, just take whatever feels uh, best for you to use. Uh, most likely, I will mess up some stuff on camera, but uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm new at uh, styrene building. Uh, most likely because you're watching this video, so are you. If 
my head appears on camera, uh, the top of my head, and uh, I'm sorry for that, but I'm trying to keep out of the way of the lens as much as possible. I started by, by cutting a strip just to make sure that all of my letters have the same height. Uh, otherwise you need to measure up everything uh, one thingy at a time and uh, that can be really annoying. There is your uh, strip. I will zoom the camera in a tiny bit because this is such nitpicking stuff that uh, you really need to see it up close. Quarter millimeter styrene. Uh, how to cut lettering? Well, it's pretty simple. If I want to cut uh, an H, for example, like I did in that uh, grill, I just uh, start with the legs of the H. I just press that tip of my blade in, just to score it. Or actually, I'm not scoring it, I'm cutting it all the way through. Uh, over here you can tell right now, or at least I hope you can tell, uh, that I cut out that uh, center bit of the H and I flip it around. Uh, mind you, the more difficult of a font you uh, choose to use, the more difficult it will be to cut it out. Of course, it's uh, exactly the same as it is with uh, painting a body. Uh, you can go all out and uh, decide that you want to have this uh, super elaborate font. But uh, in the end you'll have to pay for it because uh, you need to cut everything out as well. Uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm flipping it over because I, uh, well, I made those uh, cuts. Not as uh, neat as I hoped that they would be. Uh, and then I press my blade uh, in like a cross direction from the back. Cutting out those, uh, those uh, slits that I made. Over here you can see that this is already starting to look like an H. And now I flip it over again. So I'm uh, back at the front, and uh, then I just simply cut across once and twice, or I can press the blade in. This blade that I'm using right now is a tiny bit dull, did some uh, scraping with it, but uh, just to explain the, the basics of uh, what I did in that grill, it will do just fine. There you go, that's an H. It uh, could be that you need to straighten it out a tiny bit, but you can also, uh, when you have your uh, tweezers ready and uh, you're ready to glue it on, you can always uh, press it a tiny bit in the shape that you would like to have. Um, well, if you just uh, push all of these to the side, uh, you can cut letter for letter. So, uh, uh, an I, well, really simple, there you go. Uh, an M, also really simple, just pressing the blade. Pressing the blade again. There you go. I made a tiny word. It says him. How do you make a P? Well, I'll show you. Mind you, there's no P in Hemistorm, so I didn't need to make it, but uh, still a valid question. Cut out one corner first. Like that. Cut it across. Now I got this. What I do in case uh, uh, there's like a hole in a letter, like uh, like there is an O or an R, for example, I glue the letter first, and then afterwards I just scrape out uh, the part that I don't need. So there you got it, a P. You can always uh, round off the corners a tiny bit, of course, before you start gluing it. It'll save you a tiny bit of work. I chose to go with a really uh, square font on the grill just because it's my first time and I didn't want to go uh, with uh, a lot of uh, squiggly letters. Uh, but that's a good base for a P, for example. Um, and you can tell over here on the grill how 
super simple my font actually is. So there's really not that much to it. Those, uh, those classic cars that you see this type of lettering on uh, most often, uh, like those old Ford pickup trucks and whatnot, those uh, fonts, they're kind of simple, kind of square. Uh, so this should be able to help you out in that department. My headlight surroundings look a bit more detailed than I did uh, last time around. Uh, I shaved out one of the, I don't even know if that's the word for it, but I got rid of one of the indicator holes. Um, there's one daylight unit, I think, in this whole uh, cluster, uh, which is either top or bottom, I don't know. Uh, and then you have the indicator and then you have the main uh, headlight. And what I did, I got rid of the bottom one just to give it a bit more of an uh, aggressive look. But then after I was done doing that, I thought that it looked a bit dull with just that uh, flat front. Uh, so I chose to add a ring to it and that ring kind of mimics a, a compass in a way uh, or a gun sight and it gives it a bit more of a, of a detailed look and I think it adds a lot to the whole front of the car. To make that ring, uh, people say that there's, uh, or I know for a fact that you actually have drill bits that you can use uh, to make round shapes. Uh, and I can imagine that it works from some sort of center point. So you would start with the outer shape and then go to the inner. In my case, I do not have such a drill. Uh, so what I did is I just drew those uh, two rings on a bit of a uh, styrene, uh, kept it attached to the sheet, took my drill off my Dremel uh, and drilled it out. With your uh, drill, you can also grind a tiny bit. So uh, that, that's, uh, that's a nice extra function of it if you if you just start pressing away to the sides. Uh, afterwards I took this uh, tiny sanding drum that you can see over here and I yet just used that to get as close to the line as possible. Uh, when I was done doing that uh, I cut out the outer shape, uh, just cut off uh, most of the material around the edges and uh, sanded it smooth. So there's a, there's a good tip for you, keep it attached to the sheet so you actually have some good uh, surface to work from. Well there you have it, how to make your own uh, custom grill and your own custom headlight surroundings uh, in case you also are uh, building a different version of, uh, of a car that you have a hard body off. Again in my case I'm building a Con Defender rather than a, a regular Land Rover Defender. I like the beefed up stance. Uh, it's really nice to work with styrene, it's really nice to, to alter your uh, hard body a tiny bit, give it a few custom touches, makes it stand out in the crowd. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this, if you did please give the video a thumbs up, if you have any questions, comments whatsoever, uh, leave me a message in the box below and uh, I will try to get back to you uh, as soon as possible or as soon as I have an opportunity to read it. And if you want to see more videos or uh, if you check back and you've seen a few already, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching and uh, take care.